So now we'll look at the properties of double integrals. A uh, few of these, the first couple we've seen already in section 15.1, but we'll add a couple more properties here. So just to recall, the first property says that the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals. The second property says that the integral of a scalar times a function is just the scalar times the integral of the function. The third property says that if a function f is bigger than a function g on the region, then the integral of f is bigger than the integral of g on that region. The fourth property says that if we've got a region that we can split up into two smaller regions that don't overlap, uh, except possibly they may have common boundary, then if I want to integrate the function over the entire domain, it suffices just to integrate over each of the individual domains and then piece the results together. Property E says that if we take the double integral of the constant function 1 over a domain D, then what we get is the area of that region. So this tells us that these concepts of double integrals, we often are thinking about them in terms of volumes, but they can also give us areas. If we integrate the constant function 1 over the region D, then what gets produced is the area of that region. And the last property says that if the function f is trapped between two constants, then the integral of f is trapped between the, con the lower constant, the lower bound, m, times the area of the region, and it's bounded above by the upper bound on the function m, capital M, times the area of the region. So that's the property that we're going to use in this next example. This next example, so I'll try to keep it visible up there, this next example says, let's estimate the value of this integral where d is the disk with center at the origin and radius a half. So we are interested in integrating that function e to the x squared plus y squared over this circular disk. Let's fill it in. And this circular disk has a radius of a half. So it's a half and a half. Or in other words, it's x squared plus y squared is equal to a quarter. So that's the region we are integrating over. The problem is, if I want to find the exact value, I'd have to find the antiderivative of e to the x squared plus y squared with respect to x. So this is effectively finding the antiderivative of e to the x squared. I can't write that as an elementary function. So this problem is very hard when you look at it through that lens. We will see next section that we can make this problem a little bit easier by switching to a different coordinate system. But as of right now, this is a hard problem. Finding the antiderivative of e to the x squared plus y squared pretty much stops us in our tracks of making progress. However, if we are just asked to estimate, as we are here, we can note the following. Our integrand, e to the x squared plus y squared, that is trapped between what? Well, the smallest value it can take on is 1. So that's e to a positive power. And so that's always going to be bigger than or equal to 1. And what's the biggest it could take on? Well, the biggest x squared plus y squared can be is a quarter. So this is smaller than e to the quarter. So at least I have a lower bound and an upper bound on my function. So we're going to let this be our little m and this be our big M in that statement up above. So that means now that the double integral over this region D of e to the x squared plus y squared dx dy is trapped between e to the 1 quarter times the area of the region D and it's bounded below by 1 times the area of the region D. What is the area of our region D? Well, the area of D, if I call this D, then the area of D is the area of the circle of radius 1 half, so it's pi times 1 half squared, or in other words, pi by 4. So that means that our integral is trapped between pi by 4 and e to the 1 quarter times pi by 4. And so these are values are roughly, let's just get an approximate value for this, pi by 4 
is roughly 0 0.785 and e to the 1 quarter times pi by 4, that's approximately 1.0085. So we've got an estimate for our integral. It's somewhere between 0.785 and 1.0085. So this is how we can use these properties of the integral to do things like estimate the value of an integral. If we can't work out the antiderivative, then let's just figure out what is the biggest the function value can get on that domain, what is the smallest value, and so then it's trapped between the areas times the upper and lower values. Alright, that's it for this section. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.